Good afternoon, traders, and welcome to today's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, if you can hear me loud and clear and you can see um, the Tickmill welcome screen, if you could type a Y in the chat box. Good stuff. Okay, let's get going. Before we jump in to today's discussion, first and foremost, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Trading any financial instrument carries an inherent risk and you can lose more capital than you put on deposit. And secondly, and most importantly for today, um, the views expressed here are solely mine. They are not indicative of um, Tickmill UK Limited or Tickmill Europe Limited. So now we understand the risks. Uh, just a brief introduction to myself. Um, my name, like I say, is Patrick Manley. I have been involved in the financial markets for uh, 15 years now. I wasn't always involved in uh, financial markets prior to uh, getting involved. I did a startup, um, a technology executive search startup. I went through some pretty rapid growth over a four to five year periods. I cashed in my stake in the business through a merger. And then I decided I wanted to explore my passion for markets. I'd had a pretty much a front row seat to the dot-com boom and bust of the late 90s, early noughties. And, um, and I got this hooked on, on financial markets and uh, the psychology really behind uh, the, the financial arena. And, uh, and I started day trading the S&P 500 uh, late 2004, early 2005, uh, trending market. I caught some lucky early breaks and uh, experienced some solid and then quite significant gains. But as is often the case with the uninitiated and the beginner, the, uh, the luck ran out and um, the market started to reverse. I didn't really realize what was happening and I just started averaging down into positions. Uh, pretty quickly gave back all the gains I'd made and then, uh, and then actually ended up taking a, a six-figure hit on my, my own personal capital, which to say was a, a gut-wrenching experience is an understatement, but it was a wake-up call. Unfortunately for me at that stage, it wasn't a terminal loss, um, but it was significant enough for me to have to take a step back and think whether or not I could really make it in the markets, whether I could actually derive a sustainable uh, long-term income from trading. So I said about looking at people who were doing that, and I identified a mentor and through some networking, um, got involved with a guy in the States, uh, worked with him for 18 months to two years, um, pretty intensively. He, uh, he not just upped my technical game, my technical skills, but he really made me focus on my, my mental game and, uh, and my, the, my, my issues uh, with respect to money, with respect to uh, fear of missing out, uh, fear and greed with respect to money as well. And uh, it was a process through which I became far more self-aware. One of the major, uh, major, I guess, revelations to me at that stage was that I'd been, through, throughout my, my earlier career, um, I'd been a pretty goal-orientated individual. So I was, uh, you know, looking at uh, winning new clients, winning new business, uh, delivering fee income. And I always had goals in mind and I, I could, immediately set out how I was going to achieve those goals. Whereas um, the markets is a comp are a completely indifferent um, environment. You have, to, you have to actually move away from being a goal-orientated individual and you have to become a process-orientated individual. And what do I mean by process? Well, I mean, you have to have a trade, trade plan, a business plan. That needs to be back-tested and forward-tested extensively so that when you trade live capital in the markets, you have sufficient conviction in your strategy that when you go through a small period of drawdown, it doesn't mean that you give up or throw in the towel or start looking for another strategy that you think might work better. It's, uh, it's really anchoring yourself to your, your trading process and knowing that, 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 that then in turn allows you to experience drawdowns with relative psychological ease. Because if you, once you get past the stage of being emotionally invested in individual trade outcomes or even you know a series of 10 trade outcomes once you start thinking about the next 100 trades it really frees up your your mental space and your head space 
to just focus on the trading process and not to be concerned uh, or dis disheartened by short-term outcomes. On the screen at the moment, you can see some uh, trading data from 2013. Um, the reason why it's from 2013, not from 2008, when I went back into the, into the markets, um, is that this is when I started to manage account service. Initially, it was for friends and family. It's grown organically now to, uh, to a multi-million dollar portfolio. And you can see quite clearly on the screen here, there are periods where I go through drawdowns, where I have losing, uh, losing months and consecutive losing months. But that, again, is just part of the process because it, it, no strategy is going to fit every, every phase of the market. And so you just have to stick, stick to your plan, keep hitting the trades, and know that if you've done the work, if you've, done, if you've, if you've ex extensively tested your, your trade plan and forward tested it, that over that extended series of outcomes, your edge will demonstrate itself again. So um, it, this is, this, I, I share that just to show you that, you know, the, the, I, it's, uh, I, you know, I live and breathe what I, what I talk about here. It's, um, it's a, it, it is a really, for me, it's about process over outcome. And I'm simply just playing probabilities. It's, it, trading is really a numbers game. Uh, the most important numbers for me really on this screen are down here in this in the corner. Um, average losing month, 2.32%, with an average winning month of 7.96%. So if you extrapolate that out, you can see I'm making on average two to three times what I lose. And that's really the most, uh, most important figure for me in terms, of, uh, in terms of my track record. Uh, so aside from my, um, my account management responsibilities and managing my own capital, I'm obviously the, uh, one of the uh, resident market experts for Tickmill. I provide them with a daily market outlook and a, a setup each day that I'm, I'm looking at. And then the other project, which is really a, a passion project for me, is, um, is FX Career Swap business designed to develop retail trading talent to take them from um, from the basics through to the basics through to learning um, the strategies I've used over the past uh, past 12 years to successfully navigate the markets and uh, ultimately take them through to having the opportunity to overcome what is one of the biggest challenges for retail traders and that's capitalization because you can have a great trading plan and a, you know back test and forward test but Believe me when I say this, if, if you're, all you've got is a, a thousand or a couple of thousand dollars, you are going to find it very difficult to make a sustainable income from that level of capitalization. And more often than not, what will happen to a trader is they will uh, initially adhere to their, their plan and, and manage their risk correctly. But once they start to see that they're not getting the financial returns, they tend to overextend themselves, uh, over leverage, and it's, uh, it's those times when they experience a small drawdown and that's what tends to wipe accounts out. So um, what we offer is a, is a funded account that you can grow in, and develop into a, into a sustainable business that you can derive an income from. Um, and we're offering, I think I mentioned before, a free trial on this. I'll put the, uh, the link into the chat now for anyone who's interested in finding out more about um, that opportunity. Um, so that's, uh, that's really a flavor of who I am and, and where I'm coming from with respect to the markets. So before we jump into the charts, as always, just want to check in with some seasonality flow data and some, some options stuff that I think is interesting. So we're in August, um, expecting some weakness to develop into these equity markets. Not quite seeing it yet, but I, we're, as I'm going to talk about shortly, we're at some pretty pivotal levels where we could start to see the potential for at least a correction um, heading into the, the second half of August. Also looking for weakness in some of the risk FX pairs as well, which tend to perform, uh, don't, which tend not to perform as well in August and the dollar index, which, uh, which normally has, a, has an okay month. So always just want to, again, these, these, uh, this seasonality data is not a core, uh, driving factor behind a trade but if I get a signal through one of my strategies and uh, and it starts to move in my favor a bit then I might uh, I might be inclined to take off the, the take profit target and see if I can ride this trade um, knowing that I have an additional factor with respect to seasonality in my favor so always um, just paying attention to or um, being cognizant of what the seasonal factors are 
And then it's uh, positioning stuff as always uh, update here from Credit Agricole. Again, they're stressing that they're seeing a, uh, a big stretch at the moment in terms of Euro positioning. Um, and they, uh, they, they have a model, I, I, I share this with the guys in the, in the uh, team chat, but their model shows that we're, we're well above 2.5 standard deviations away from a mean in terms of Euro positioning. And more often than not, that precedes a correction um, this is supported further. This is the um, Euro data versus uh, uh, the Reuters data. So this is positioning data in purple, and this is a uh, this is the Euro dollar in the orange line here. So you can see trading around. Well, we're trading a bit higher than that now, but the positioning data suggests that um, the market is he is stretched on the long side in terms of the Euro at the moment. And when we've seen similar types of levels, um, what we tend to see is at least a, a corrective phase develop, highlighted by these stretches here, and these stretches here. And you can see um, the stretch we've now got versus current price, which is, uh, which is verging on, sorry, I'll just come back to that, um, which is verging on almost a record stretch in terms of, um, in terms of the euro at the moment. So we, uh, we certainly want to be cognizant of um, positioning data because what what that means is for those who uh, who aren't uh, experiencing this is that the when a position becomes stretched and everyone's loaded the boat on one side we tend to get at least a snapback or correction to allow some of that positioning data to unwind doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see a, a reversal in the trend the trend you know the trend may be set in stone and, and, and can develop further. But certainly what you tend to find is once the positioning and certainly this speed of positioning that we've seen here, it tends to proceed a little bit of a, a squeeze in terms of the, uh, the price action. Another, um, another market concept that I follow um, pretty religiously is FX options in terms of understanding where the sentiment is in the market. And at the moment, this is, these, are, uh, these are the FX option expiries now out through the end of 2020. And, um, and at the moment, we can see that 120 is a pretty significant um, barrier here. And if we can breach 120, because of the lack of positioning to the upside, this could fuel quite a big, quite a, 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 an increased um, move to the upside into the, uh, the latter part of this year. Obviously, at the moment, we're trading well below 120. Um, we're at 118.37 at the moment. So you can see the big, the, the big barrier at the moment is this 118.50. That's where the options are. And as is explained here, um, typically the options are hedged um, to, we're with cash to limit exposure, which, uh, which can contain FX volatility when the impending maturities are large. So this 118.50 is relatively large at the moment. But if we can start to chew through 118, 119 is the next one. And then we've got more around 119.50, but certainly the big one to watch heading into the, the, the next part of this year is 120. And if we can get a, a day, a couple of days close through 120, then that, uh, that should fuel a move as, uh, as options traders will be forced to, to cover their positions in the cash markets. So that, um, oh, and, and actually just to um, revisit something we talked about last week in terms of gold, Similar, so here's the same situation. We talked last week about the gold situation, the gold market being stretched. We'd had record, almost record inflows into the into gold funds just at the back end of last week, and then um, and then lo and behold, we had that big squeeze to the downside. So this is that's a, there's a real term, uh, sorry, a real time example for you in terms of how positioning functions in the market. Once the boat is heavily loaded on one side, then we tend to get these pretty violent, uh, violent corrections. And that's not to say that the trend won't resume, but once we reach these positioning extremes, more often than not, we need to get a shakeout, um, which is healthy for, for the market. Okay, so let's start uh, with a couple of charts. I wanted to check in here today uh, with some of the higher time frames. These are the monthly charts. And just to get a perspective on where we are in the higher time frame and what the scope for in terms of potential moves can can still be because it's i know a lot of uh, retail traders are, are trading intraday charts or um you know even smaller time frames than that and tend to lose perspective on, on the bigger picture and where the bigger opportunities are where the the structural moves could be and so 
This is the dollar index, the broad dollar index versus uh, six other major currencies. Um, and you can see we've taken out, or well, we are potentially going to take out on a closing basis this month, the, uh, the ascending trend line from the 2011 lows. And if we can do that, then that is going to open up, to my mind, an equality objective. So when I talk about equality, I'm talking about price has a tendency to swing at a minimum in a quality move. So you can see that leg there. And if we overlay it here, you can see that this will put us down into um, the 87 level at a, as, the, as the quality objective um, with respect to the dollar. And that's not to say we won't back and fill. We, you know, we, if we can get a, a monthly close um, through uh, last month's closing low, then that should trigger further downside. But again, we could still see some back and filling then at some point as we potentially retest this trend line from below in a snapback move. But ultimately, the path of least resistance now for the dollar is going to be to the downside. And in terms of targets, um, certainly the, the 90 level will have psychological, has a psychological magnetism to it. But any correction from 90, um, whilst we hold below 94.50, we should still see further downside to ultimately test, certainly retest these prior lows at the 88.30, but we've got this uh, quality objective, 87.49. And then if for whatever reason, the market really gets going on the downside, and, um, and you can see, you know, we had a similar double top type move here. We had this leg, uh, let's just bring this over here. You can see that leg there is almost equidistant. And so we could see that, we can see this move, some correction, um, but then, you know, we can easily extend lower here. Um, as many of you will know that uh, I perceive that we could be heading into a significant um, dollar bear market. And, um, and there's certainly potential for us to get back down into this 78 area or 80 handle um, and potentially lower, depending upon uh, the outcomes with respect to the U.S. elections. Um, Biden has, uh, has gained more traction now with the announcement of his, uh, his female VP. And so if Biden gets in, historically, when a Republican incumbent has been removed by a Democrat, uh, that does not bode well for the dollar. So we could be at the start here of a major, um, a major dollar downtrend. But as I say to, to the guys I work with, it's step by step. So you know we don't need to start heading out too far into the future. For now, we're focused on the monthly timeframe anyway, at this 87 level as the downside, uh, downside objective. And more importantly, what we want to see is this close ideally at or below current levels to really encourage that view. Now, if for whatever reason we're going to close back through um, the, the, this trend line resistance, I'm still, still be bearish for, um, certainly, but you know, we could back and fill quite significantly. We could be back up into this area to put in, let's just draw this in for you. Uh, that so then we could be looking at, um, at a head and shoulders type scenario here. I mean, this is, uh, to my mind at this stage, is a less likely scenario, but um, whilst it's not, uh, not highly probable, it's certainly possible. And so we could be looking at this pattern, like so before um, heading into later uh, into, into potentially next year. So if the, you know if we do get a shock in terms of these elections, so let's say for example Trump gets back in, then um, we could see some back and filling. But ultimately, I still do see uh, the path of least resistance is down for the dollar. But this is why it's really important to pay attention to these monthly closes because this is what the big money flow in the market is watching. You know, they're not watching the five-minute chart or the fifteen-minute chart. Um, big capital is focused on these higher time frames monthly weekly daily to give them confirmations of potential signals so keep an eye on that monthly close in the in the dollar index similarly in the euro um let's blow this up so the euro is testing uh major trend line resistance here this has contained the euro um for, for the, since the, uh, the gfc great financial crisis um now if we can get a close through this uh, resistance here, 118.50, a monthly close. Then the immediate target, similar to the to the dollar, is uh, is a move up to test the equality objective at 18, uh, 
So, you know, heading into the back end of this year, there could be another uh, 800 pips of upside here in the, in the euro. And again, using that same process of looking at the equality swings, you can see how that move could play out. We break, we could pull back, get a retest of the uh, broken trend line resistance as support before we power higher into the, the back end of this year and early next year. So these are, uh, again, watching these closes, we need to see that close above this trend line to encourage this view. Um, and certainly we could, once we get through there, we, we probably get a break higher, run some stops, but you could see we could test up into 125 and then get a pullback uh, before getting the next leg higher. So we've got some key levels to be watching. 118.50 on the close, on the monthly close, opens uh, a test of 125.50, pullback en route then to uh, 128.50 is how I've been looking at things. And then who knows if we are, if, you know, if this um, debt recovery fund and um, some debt mutualization in Europe, which is always ha hampered um, investment in Europe, and we are starting to see inflows into Europe and certainly I'll talk about Japanese in a minute. Uh, Japanese investors are putting money into Europe at the moment at quite a click. And so, um, you know, this, this could be a structural change in terms of how the European Union is viewed at least over the next maybe uh, one to three years. Uh, so watching the close and obviously again here, if we get a bit, if, if we start to roll over here and we're back down below 115, if we look at where the RSI stochastic and momentum studies are, that would be a concern because what we'd be looking at there is a third touch and a hold of that trend line. And if we saw that, then we would have, then that would, uh, that would be an issue and would, would elicit a, a monthly sell signal. Well, we'd have to get quite away. The monthly VWAP at the moment is 113.50. So, I mean, we'd be looking at a 500 pip reversal. Who knows? Anything can happen, obviously, but it's again, possible, but not probable. But if it did happen, then all bets would be off and we would be, uh, we'd be focused on the downside in the euro. But if we think about the positioning data, et cetera, market sentiments heading into the US elections, uh, for my mind at this moment in time anyway, path of least resistance is gonna be higher for the euro. And then just as I was mentioning about um, Japanese investors, and we're seeing a, a power forward here in terms of the, the euro yen. And again, it's got a major, uh, sending trend line resistance coming in. If we can get a close through, uh, through 129 in the Euro Yen, um, next stop in terms of the equality objective, uh, let's just copy this in. Whoops. Mm. Let's get from here. Again, we could be looking at a move up to uh, 141 in Euro Yen. And again, like I said, if you, I mean, I, I share this information on a daily basis with the, uh, the traders who I work with at FX Career Swap, but we're seeing a lot of Japanese investors who've been sitting on a lot of cash are starting to look to Europe to put that cash to work. And so as they do that, obviously that's going to see inflows into, into the Euro and, uh, and we, we potentially see the Yen lower. And so we, um, we could be looking at a significant breakout here if we can take out uh, take out this 129 on the closing basis. Again, if we fail there, then there's there's another trade setting up. We've got the RSI stochastic pretty overblown. Um, you watch the reject watch if you get a rejection there because you can back down at 116 in quite a click. But like I say, the pref my preferred scenario at this stage or the, the base case is that we move higher in euro in the euro and. Uh, and that could be where we're heading in terms of 141. The other one I've been watching is the Euro CAD. Similar story here, symmetrical triangle. Um, and we look like we could be on the verge of a significant breakout here in the Euro CAD. If we can uh, take out the 158.15 on a closing basis through, uh, through 160, and it's, uh, it's pretty much open water then up to 175. Uh, again, it's not gonna happen in a straight line, um, but certainly in terms of thinking about structural positions and looking for those daily pullbacks to trade into, then um, we've got some key levels we're approaching here with the Euro CAD, which could open up uh, quite a significant move uh, to the upside. Let's just see what I'm looking at that. So we have this leg here, this leg here. So yeah, watching one, 164 is the near term objective. If we can clear 
the 159 on a closing basis get through 160. 164 is the near-term objective um, from a, on a, a monthly scale. From there, we could, uh, we could be looking at a, a bit of back and fill, retest the trend line from above before moving higher, then targeting that 175. Euro Aussie, similar type of story, trying to get bullish here in this channel. RSI stochastic supportive. Um, we could be looking at, uh, at a bullish reversal here and, uh, and again targeting higher levels in the Euro Aussie. Sterling, similar story. Um, looking for a test now of the major sending trend line. 135 is the, is the upside objective. I'm going to talk you through, I'm going to, in a minute once we go to the daily charts, I'll, uh, I'll talk you through what I see in terms of potential trade in Sterling. Um, Sterling Kiwi. This one tested the trend line. I, I posted this previously. And again, what I'd be watching for now, um, if we get this monthly close, it, it, from, it, from my strategies, it, if that flips the monthly chart bullish, that's the higher time frame. And then I'd be looking on the daily time frame for a pullback on the daily time frame to set long positions. I think we can be trading uh, back into prior highs here, 217 and Euro Sterling. Aussie, similar type of story. Um, a little bit different with the, with the Aussie and the Kiwi because they're so he heavily related to, to risk sentiment with respect to the equity markets. We're going to take a look at those in a minute. You can see a bit of a pullback there before higher, but I'm certainly um, looking at buying, buying dips in, uh, in the Aussie Kiwi. Kiwi's looking to break out of its major uh, trend line resistance. We're backing and filling a little bit here, but it would be encouraging if we saw a strong close in terms of the Kiwi. And I think we've got to run a minimum to, uh, to this 170 area. If we take a look at the prior swing here. So 68.20 would be an, uh, a symmetry swing level through there. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, we could be going uh, 75 would be the next objective. Um, what else have I got? Gold. So we saw the, the gold move through the highs and we're now back retesting. We'll take a look at this on the daily chart in a minute. I suggested that we, we could, last week, we, we break through and we pull back and then we try and base for the run higher to 21.52 is the next objective uh, that I've been looking at um, before, uh, meaningfully higher, 24.54 in terms of a, uh, a sequence move. But we'll take a look at that on the, uh, on the daily charts now. Uh, where are we, gold? So yeah, we're trying to back and fill here. Um, if, if we don't hold, if, if we can't hold uh, on a closing basis, the prior highs. Uh, so if we, could, if we get a, a bullish inside candle today, it uh, doesn't look like we're, we're headed that way at the moment. Um, but if we do, then that would be constructive of gold. And I think uh, the setup there is to, to be long then. Um, and you, can, you get much better risk reward using these inside candles. So it'd be long through the break of 1950. And you'd be using 1910, a few pits below as your stop. And you'd be certainly targeting retest of highs. Um, but like I say, 2146 is the next interim upside objective I'd be looking for in gold. But again, you have to wait for it. And it, certainly for my trading strategy anyway, trading these, these daily timeframes, I need to see the close before, uh, before I do anything. Let's, uh, let's just go to Sterling here quickly. So Sterling... Consolidating, similar consolidation to what we saw um, back in July. And, um, and I posted this as a, as a chart of the day um, on the, the Tickmill blog this week. I think we're, we're in the, what should be a fourth wave correction here. If we can get a close through um, 31, then I'm going to look at long positions, uh, initially looking for 133, but then that 135 target. Um, there's a caveat to this, obviously, where Brexit talks recommence next week. Um, we've had some you know, positive new music out today with the, uh, the UK team saying they, they believe a deal can be struck by September. So that's, or that's, that's encouraged this move higher in terms of sterling. Um, it's always tricky, obviously, trading around these Brexit, uh, Brexit headlines because you're, all, you're only one, one news wire flash away from it cratering. But the, the risk reward looks good on this um, and we could be up at, uh, at 135 into the back end of this month. And certainly next week, if we, got, if we did get some encouraging uh, news out of the, the Brexit negotiations, that would power this, this move higher in Sterling. So I'm, I'm watching Sterling on the close tonight and see if we can get that, uh, that close above 131 
and risking 130, looking for 133 uh, as a minimum, which is the equality objective versus the initial move off the lows. But then 135 is that major descending trend line that we just talked about in the monthly charts, which will be the next magnet to the upside. Um, in terms of other trades for this evening, I believe that is all that I am I'm looking at at the moment. Um, let's just look at the dollar index quickly. So the dollar index, you can see we're kind of mapping exactly what we did in the last correction here. We've got this move off the, off the lows, uh, three or four candles, which we've got. We've got this shallow pullback, which allowed the RSI stochastic to roll over here. Then we've got another leg higher, another pullback. So, I mean, I'm still looking at the moment um, in the interim for this dollar index to, to test 94.50 um, whilst we hold these current lows at 92.48. If for whatever reason we roll up, we, we take out those lows, then I think we, uh, we, we, we'll we're probably more than likely going to take out the channel support then, which will be down to 92. Um, or we hold, or the, we get, if we did get into this area, we've got another bullish reversal, then that again could set up um, the corrective move. But understanding where we are from a positioning perspective and, um, and the bullishness in terms of equity markets, et cetera, um, it looks at the moment as, uh, as if we could potentially hold this area and, like I say, get a repeat of the move that we saw uh, during the June correction. It was choppy, very difficult to trade, but uh, we could see a repeat of that pattern before rolling over uh, then into the back end of this month and into September, October and into those elections in the US. So keeping an eye on the dollar index as always. And last but not least, let's check in with the equity markets. I wanted to I'll just show you on the monthly time frame. You can see there's the potential here um, for us to be trading in a big broadening pattern here, which more often than not will, uh, will lead to another move lower. I, at this stage, given the funding that we have in the market and the, the amount of, of dollars flowing around, um, that's difficult to see, but be, this, is, this is part and parcel of this game. You need to be aware of these key areas and, and watch, because if we do get those reversals, then um, they could be pretty meaningful. So if we go uh, back to the daily chart here, we're coming up to test prior highs at the uh, 33.98. What do we do overnight? Uh, 33.38, so we're just a point away. So you've got to watch because a lot of people will have been praying to get back to this level, to get out of the market, and, uh, and, and never have to sit through something like this again. So um, it has a big impact on investor psyche when we retest these prior breakdown levels. So certainly gonna be paying attention today, tomorrow, because we know Fridays and Mondays are the, are the times when we are more likely to experience meaningful uh, or interim highs and, or bottoms in the market. So certainly wanna watch this uh, quality objective here uh, 3402. So any bearish reversal patterns into tomorrow's close or Monday uh, through the Sunday open, we've still got uh, quite a bit of momentum divergence here, and um, we could see a correction. Again, I'm not I'm, I'm not predicting the end of the world stuff here, but we'd have some immediate quality objectives to track. So from there, we could uh, you know quickly be back at these prior highs, uh, 32, 37, and that would have an implication for the dollar and also for the, uh, the riskier FX pairs. Okay, team, that's, uh, that brings you up to speed with what I'm looking at. The, the, the trade I'm looking at for this evening is, is that sterling position. We'll have to see where we close. But there are, like I've said, you really want to keep in mind these, these higher time frame charts because they can show you the scope and potential of, of the moves that lie ahead. And then what you're looking at is your, your trading time frame to try and align with, uh, with those higher time frames and give you the setups to move into, into those bigger trades. Uh, so that's, uh, that's where I'm up to, guys, with respect to the markets. Does anyone have any questions? Um, if you want to type into the chat box, or we've got a Q&A box, I think, here, um, or if you want, uh, I can unmute your microphone and you can, uh, you can ask me uh, over the audio. If you don't have a question, um, an N in the chat box will be useful, and then I can uh, I can tell when I need to uh, I can wrap this up.
Okay, well, look, thanks very much uh, for your time today. Hope you found this helpful and uh, we'll reconvene same time next Thursday. Thanks very much. Bye now.